So my, my interest in art really started very simply um, when I was uh, 10 to 12 years old. I used to listen to radio programs. Um, Jack the All-American Boy, uh, The Whistler, Shadow, and I used to go to the papers and get the rolls of paper that they would l discard from the Columbian, uh, Columbian paper, which I delivered. And then I'd bring that out and I'd just draw while I'm listening to these programs. So that started it. And then when I was in grade seven, I started to do op art, which was a way before its time. And my teacher was a famous sculptor at school. And so he published several of my pieces at that time in a book. And, uh, and so I thought, well, there must be something here. So he, he encouraged me all the time to do more and more art. <clears throat> And uh, I found I really loved it. So uh, I used to do, I'd be in the opera, I'd sing the lead in the romantic opera, but I would also do most of the scenery, painting and, and so on. And so that was a, something that also was kind of added. So I combined music and art at that point. So then I'd hoped to go to Vancouver Art School, but all they wanted was abstract stuff, and I'm not abstract. And so I said, well, I can't waste my time on this. So I went to university for three years to, to, and took medicine. But I decided after three years that I really wasn't cut out for that. And so I got a scholarship singing and I went to Toronto and I, I uh, studied voice. Then I studied a degree in music uh, where I teach all the instruments, 15 different instruments, all the brasses, woodwinds, percussions, everything like that. And at that time, I, I was completely absorbed in music. It took a lot of work to do to learn all these instruments in a short time. Three months per instrument. So you had to take it from nothing to play something. So anyway, I, I did some artwork while I was there, but not, not, not a lot. But it, when, I got, when I found out the, the my courses were a bit frustrating, to say the least, and I had art. I, 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 can get, I can get into art. And it just, it transports you to another place. And so it was very important. And spiritually, I was looking, 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 and looking at that point. I was raised in a Christian home. Um, and so I basically believed, but I didn't, wasn't going to go for the whole schmazola. I, I, I said, there's some things I got to know myself. So I left it all for 10 years. And at that time, I was going through art, and I was going through philosophy, and I was reading books. And I read a, a lot of Ayn Rand when I was 13, which is quite young for that book. It was very deep philosophy. But there was artists in there, and they encouraged me to be uh, more art-inclined. So I thought da Vinci was the last, Leonardo da Vinci was the last word. Van Gogh was my hero, uh, or Van Gogh in, in Netherlands, and Michelangelo. And uh, so I started to copy their work. And uh, s that plus the uh, my encouragement from my teacher, um, I discovered that I had some ability. So then it just, the rest is kind of history. I just see different objects that I like to reproduce. One of my favorite subjects, of course, is, is mountains. This one is just a quick little uh, Israeli giraffe. Now this particular technique, is not too well known on the West Coast here or in Israel, where we're spending a lot of our time. Uh, it's called a scratch board, and literally that's what you do. You, you, you receive this black piece of paper, you draw a very light line drawing, and then you, you just take it from there and, and draw the animal or the picture out of that. And um, like, well, this one is this one's strictly from memory. This one was, this is called a winter tree. And I just made that up. But it's, it's, it gives the feeling of, you know, bare branches and storm clouds and all the rest of it. So it's all very literal. I have a theory that because all the nations were involved, in a sense, in the Holocaust, they knew about it, but they didn't do anything, that they're both their music lost the melody and art lost its subjects. And so you end up abstracting things. The melodies that are in composers' lives uh, up in well, the 30s and 40s and 50s and beyond are usually you know where they're going 
it's not something you can whistle when you leave the theater if you've seen a concert. And the art was done with this, boop, yeah, with this back, bang. All these artists were picking up abstract ideas. They were drawing out of the art. Ella Picasso, who led the way into a blind alley, as far as I'm concerned. So the gold master's technique was set, set aside, and they did everything from uh, a blob of this, a blob of that, and I just wasn't impressed. So I left all of that and, you know, studied music. So then I um, was studying opera. I studied opera, did several operas, um, performed in the operas, and uh, then I found that I had to make some scenery in Jerusalem. So I d designed the scenery for an opera called Amala Night Visitors, which was a very elaborate uh, set. So I had to conceive it and then paint it and draw it and then also act as one of the kings, singing and music and hauling eight and ten bags and instruments and the accordions and all this stuff for years. And it's really time that I'd be realistic about my years. And this is far more, shall I say, passively, actively involved. In North America, our faces are fairly bland compared to where we're living a lot of time in Jerusalem. You get a phenomenal cross-section of different kinds of people, different people that have gone through an awful lot and their face show it. Uh, they, they think a lot and their eyes show it. Uh, there's a, just a lot of, there's a different thing. So I, I enjoy portraits. I did a lot of portraits in university to put myself through. This is an old man making falafels that you eat in, in Israel. And then there's to, to a light. And I see as a metaphor, Israel has been sent to be the light of the world. And this guy is dealing with elemental food and he's, he's cook, ha, have his own light, which he's creating. So he's feeding people and he's also spending time philosophizing as he's cutting this, uh, these falafel pitas and so on down here. This is one of the synagogues that the Jordanians ruined when they were, they, they ruined 57 of them. And this is one of the ones they ruined was his left. But I thought the ruin was beautiful in itself. Uh, this is a, a desert sheikh and his camel, his trusty camel. They, um, these camels can go seven days without water. They get loaded up with water. And when Rebecca, in, Rebecca agreed to um, fill Aliezer's animals with water, we're talking about thousands of gallons. So these things are, are amazing. And I, I just like the expressions on their face. They always look so superior. This Bedouin woman is, carries all her valuables, her silver and gold with her all the time. Uh, so that this is her dowry. This is what she brings to the wedding uh, when, they, when they marry. And, the, uh, and this is amber. This is real amber. All the, the jewelry in the Middle East generally is the real thing. It's not uh, plastic. This is the real silk. Okay, this one I'm very happy with. It's, uh, this is the headwaters of the Jordan River coming out of Mount Hermon. A place called Panyas or Pan, where they used to worship Pan, the earth god. And that's just down below this. And these are the, this is all done in um, pencil, crayon. And uh, one of the things that I want to do is get into the art world in Israel because it's very rich in terms of quality and people and the rest of it. So I, have, I hope to spend more time in Israel um, involving myself in art lessons and the rest of it, either giving them or taking them. And uh, I think I can add something to the art world there. Under the shadow of your wings A sweet pavilion from the storm